Richard, we're sorry about that. It was a technical glitch, but we will continue with that weather warning. There are three, three flood alerts and a weather warning remaining in place in the borders as rain continues to fall across the area. Water levels are causing concern on the Edelson Water in and around Peebles, the Black Adder between Greenlaw and Allenton, and the Eye Water from Grant South to Eyemouth. The only reported problem we do have at the moment on the local roads is the A1 near Grant's House, where flooding has led to slow traffic and queues. The East Coast Main Line was closed for around three hours this morning, north of Reston Station, because of flooding, but services have been running as normal this afternoon. We will have a full weather forecast at the end of this bulletin. The Scottish Borders Council has confirmed that all schools in the region will close next Thursday due to planned teacher strikes. The EIS union announced yesterday that November the 24th will be the first day of industrial action after its members rejected the national pay offer for next year. Local authorities say that early learning and childcare provision will be open as normal. Borders MP Christine Graham has raised concerns in the Scottish Parliament over recent findings by the Auditor General that the capital projects have been subjected to a 30% cost increase since Brexit and she was looking for assurances that the, like, the hikes won't impact on the planned extension to the Borders Railway. Minister of Transport Jenny Gilruth admitted inflationary rises were a concern. The Scottish Government have already allocated up to £5 million through the Borderlands Inclusive Deal to assess the benefits and the challenges of extending the Borders Railway and that funding will be released on the achievement of agreed milestones and in line with the processes that apply to all growth deals. But Christine Graham is absolutely right to point to the inflationary pressures which are currently hampering and challenging a number of capital projects, particularly in, in transport. We know additionally that Brexit has also impacted on the availability of materials and on costs and so these inflationary pressures are additional. Ms Goldruth added that the Scottish Government was awaiting a response from Westminster regarding the feasibility study. A 34-year-old woman who assaulted a police officer in Peebles has been ordered to pay a total of £350 at Selkirk Sheriff Court. Kathleen Dykes had been staying at the Peebles Hydro last October when she got into an argument with her partner. The row led to police being called and Dykes punched an officer as he attempted to handcuff her. Dykes, now living in Mid Calder, was fined £100 for threatening her abusive behaviour, £230 for police assault and an additional £20 victim surcharge. A Gala Shields football coach has returned from a trip to Rwanda which saw around 3,000 kits, balls, goals and footwear items handed out to some of the country's poorest children. The Scottish Football for Rwanda charity was founded six years ago but the pandemic prevented any on-the-ground work taking place for more than two years. Dave Sparham from Gala Feridine Rovers was one of 16 coaches who's just spent 10 days taking football sessions for the youngsters in Rwanda. He admits the coaching was popular. It, it was generally between 50 and a hundred kids would expect to turn up uh, at one event or one one sort of session. Uh, and if it was told it was going to be 70, guaranteed there'd be 120 kids that would be there. That we'd then obviously start trying to split up in the little groups where each sort of coach would take a little, a little session for, a, for an hour. Um, but as I say, you would turn around once you had your session set up and there would then be another 150 kids that had, uh, had came out, literally came out of the jungle. I mean, everywhere it was just surrounded by trees, banana trees, plantations, you name it. And then these kids would just come from nowhere. Sport now in Selkirk host Jed Forrest at Philip Hawk in the Premiership this evening, which will also double up as a Border League pool game. Also tonight at the Green Yards, Melrose have a national one-home tie with Stuart's Melville. Melrose head coach is Bert Grigg. After a good performance up the road in Inverness, we're looking for a, a sort of continual home form as well. Keep getting better and probably had a 40-minute performance up in Inverness and looking for that sort of 60, 80-minute performance this weekend. Um, just keep building that momentum into the, into the Christmas break look to take their opportunities put out a performance and keep that momentum going Well tomorrow Hoy Coast Premiership bottom side Musselburgh and in National 1 Gala will be looking for the points when they travel to air In football Berwick Rangers host Cumbernauld Colts in the Lowland League although there is a pitch inspection in the morning in the East Challenge Cup Colts stream at home to Broxburn in the third round in the second division Hoy Crowell Albert United welcome Whitburn while Tweedmouth Rangers host Edinburgh United Borders weather 
Here's Kirsty MacDonald. Cloudy this evening and tonight with further outbreaks of rain which will be heavy at times. A Met Office yellow warning of heavy rain remains until midnight with the risk of further flooding and transport disruption. Lows tonight of 4 or 5 Celsius, winds will ease a little. Tomorrow will be predominantly cloudy with patchy rain at times, breezy from the southeast with highs of 9 Celsius. Sunday looks largely dry with some spells of brightness and some sunshine. BBC Radio Scotland weather for the borders. I'll be back with more news and sport for the borders, hopefully glitch free at half past five. Get the latest news on your smart speaker whenever you want. Just say, play BBC News for Scotland. It's 4.36. You're listening to Drive Time with me, Fiona Stalker. Let's keep you across the picture of the weather. Uh, now, heavy rainfall, we just heard there in the bulletin, just to recap on the picture right across the country if you're just tuning in. An amber warning for rain has been extended until 9 o'clock tonight for Angus, Perth and Kinross, Aberdeen and Aberdeenshire, signalling a possible danger to life. Many roads are impassable and train services have been cancelled. The fire service says they're getting a high volume of flooding calls from Brechin, Fawfer and Dundee. And we're also getting reports of flooding in Ballater on Royal D site. Well, let's head there now and speak to the chair of the Ballater Community Council, Jim Anderson. Jim, good evening to you. How are you doing? Just uh, give us an idea of what's happening there with you. Uh, well, the river levels are certainly very high. I mean... My own yard flooded this morning with about four or five feet of water in it this morning. Um, but, yeah, the river's, yeah, really high and people are worried. They've closed some of the lower roads in the village just for safety and that. Just